The title of my talk is actually quite complicated and when I was doing the slides I thought that maybe I could do it a little bit shorter. So this is like a little bit shorter probably, but since we are talking about functional programming I thought that maybe this will be like more understandable for everyone. And maybe there are some Perl developers here so I just couldn't resist really. But okay, my, my name is Rafał Poštarski, I'm a staff backend engineer at RAMP. Uh, yes, yeah, so some of you may know me from Stack Overflow. I don't know, Piotr, if I can reload the page because I think that uh, uh, I just try to do it because I see that, yeah, so some people recognize my avatar more than, than myself, so I usually start my talks with uh, adding my, uh, you know, Stack Overflow avatar. But that's enough about me. Uh, here's some background about the things that I would like to talk about. Uh, I would like to talk about JavaScript, and uh, I think that JavaScript always was functional. I mean, not in like a traditional way, because it was sometimes a little bit dysfunctional, but in a mathematical sense, so in like uh, as in functional programming. And now we have TypeScript, which is even more functional in the traditional sense, in being functional in the mathematical sense. And this is what I would like to focus today. Of course, there are different paradigms that we can talk about, speaking about both of those languages, but, uh, and there is pretty much a lot that can be said about them, but I would like to focus that for me personally, as a backend developer, uh, the most important um, aspects of them are that they are functional, asynchronous, non-blocking, and single-threaded, which have some serious consequences in how we have to think about the code. But today I would only like to focus about it being functional. And when we drop JS from that, we can also say that it's statically typed. So being functional and statically typed gives us a lot of good frameworks to reason about our code and uh, the control flow and uh, all of the logic. But we have some exceptional problems uh, with the type system in TypeScript. Uh, and in JavaScript, we also have like a lot of like non-values. There's like null, undefined, no value at all. This is all pretty much different. And this has some bad consequences. The creator of null once said that it's a, it was like a billion dollar mistake so like I guess in JavaScript we have like at least three of those so we are like three times as much lucky as most of the languages uh, and there is a problem that we, we have like errors we have exceptions that exceptions don't necessarily have to be errors they can be uh, thrown pretty much any other type of data and the errors don't have to be really raised as an exceptions. We have rejected promises, which is something a little bit different. So this is also a little bit complicated. So, but maybe there is some option to make it more like manageable thanks to functional programming. And there is FPTS that probably a lot of people know uh, that uh, can rescue us here with all of this. And there is like, I would like to show there will be, well, there will be not a lot of code in my talk, uh, but there is like an option type, which is like a tagged union that can be used instead of like using null or undefined or like non no value, which is actually a pretty simple object with just a tag and some value. And there is either type, which is either a value or an error which is also pretty, pretty easy when you see how it is implemented. So we all love FPTS, we can use all of this, but there is like one thing that uh, last year happened, that uh, it was announced that FPTS actually is, is merging with Effect, Effect TS, and Giulio Canti actually joins the Effectful Technologies, which is a startup behind the Effect TS. And Giulio Canti, if someone is not familiar, is actually the, uh, he, basically FPTS is his private project on GitHub. So uh, if he is joining FFTS, then basically like everyone after some time will probably, the, all the development move, move there. 
So we have no choice. We have to love effect like we love FPTS today. And as you can see, this is exactly the same as FPTS. If anyone is familiar, this is, there's like no, no difference in, in the option type and option object and also the either type and either object. I don't see anyone like raising any objection here, but actually there are some quite subtle differences. So the problem is that like the effect has uh, a little bit different types and a little bit different values uh, of, those, uh, of those tagged unions. Uh, I won't go into details here because we don't have a lot of time, but I will gladly talk about it later. But it basically means that we cannot just switch from using effect, uh, from using FPTS to effect, and we cannot really uh, use them interchangeably in one code base. So this has some consequences in migration. So we would pretty much would have to like migrate to effect instead of using both of them in the same project. And also the either type is also different. But I will know maybe go into the details here, but it's important to just know that the types are not entirely compatible. They can be assigned one way, but not the other. So this is not like a simple, uh, it, it, it is not really uh, possible for a large project to uh, like progressively switch some parts from FPTS to effect. It would pretty much have to happen at the same time. And th there is also an interesting concept in effect, which is called defect, uh, which is like an, act, an unexpected failure, uh, which is uh, to, to make it different that this is not like an error like 404 that everything is OK. I don't have the resource that you are asking me, and I'm like correctly responding with an error message, but that Actually, some of my code is broken, and I have to fix it. So the defects are those bugs in my pro like are effects of bugs of, of my program instead of like an expected behavior. So this is also one of the differences between FPTS and effect. So like switching from FPTS to effect, in my opinion, is will be inevitable, but a little bit tricky. But this is perfect time to learn, actually. This is like my own quote that it's this a very good time to learn. I just had to quote myself to make it like, make the slides better. So as you can see, this is like the scope of the project is a little bit bigger. But if you just not look about the new additions and just focus, focus on the, about type errors and pipeable APIs, then uh, we can just uh, learn to, to migrate the code from FPTS to effect and later maybe use some other, some other features. And this is like a little spoiler that this is like more uh, advanced code in effect. It uses generator functions and like uh, so someone who used actually uh, coroutines before uh, async await might be a little bit familiar with this pattern, and this is something that uh, effect uses to uh, make the functional code uh, like use most more imperative or more uh, sometimes easier to manage. And also, actually, the team of effect has created like a fork of TypeScript, which is called TypeScript Plus. And let's just not maybe go deeply into that, but there is like a different dialect of TypeScript that is meant to uh, make the strange syntax more like more uh, mainstream. And I guess that maybe it will in the future result if, in some changes in the TypeScript itself, hopefully. Okay, so here is uh, why I think that we should really think about it and think about it seriously uh, in just other reasons for, for other reasons than just technical uh, like the good software so first is the startup called effectful technologies uh, which is created and which is like a strong company that is behind uh, the development of effect so this is like a no longer a project of one person on github and some volunteers, but this is actually a big effort to 
uh, to produce some strong and reliable software. Uh, soon there will be the conference Effect Days. This is like a three-day conference in Vienna, so this is also huge. It, I think that after this conference, there will be a lot of like YouTube videos from this conference, and I think that it will start getting much more traction than during this year when it was uh, originally developed. Giulio Canti, as I said, joins Effectful Technologies. Uh, and Giulio Canti, if anyone don't, doesn't know, this is like the G Canti from the URL of the repository of FPTS. So this is like the main person of, the, of FPTS itself. So that's another reason that I think that the uh, development will switch from FPTS to Effect. Um, and the FPTS is basically, uh, was announced to be merging into Effect. Uh, this was announced by uh, Michael Arnaldi, which is the founder of Effectful Technologies. So this is something, also I, I, uh, there's a good uh, article by Michael Arnaldi about it. Uh, I, uh, oh, my slides will be, the URL will be available at the end. So if anyone wants to uh, take a look at the links that it will be there. And the Effectful Technologies announced that Effect is only the layer zero of what we have in mind. And this I think is like the bigger thing. Uh, it's, it, it can be overlooked, but I think that the entire uh, company, the people behind it, think about building some, some big uh, and more complicated like frameworks on top of effect, as I think. And this is another, another reason why I think it should be, uh, like we should focus on it to, to see how it, how it goes and what will be an announced on the effect days. So uh, you can also follow some of the um, icons on Twitter. I, I mean on X, sorry. Uh, so this is like uh, the Effectful Technology, uh, the Effect TS account, Giulio Canti and Michael Arnaldi. Uh, and uh, th a lot of good news is there, links to articles. So if you follow those four accounts, then you are pretty much covered. And the best resources is like the Effect that website. This is the URL of the Effect TS. And this is this. It has really excellent documentation. This is really good. I, I encourage everyone to take a look at it. Just uh, even if you don't plan to using it, but this is like an example good documentation that I've seen. And also the FPTS documentation is good to read along and compare if you are already familiar with that. So this is this was quick. I wanted to have some room for questions. Uh, or maybe if there are not questions, then maybe not. But if there are any questions, I'll prepare some bribes for you. There are some Rubik's cubes. So if anyone would ask a question, then feel free to grab a cube and have fun with it. OK, so that's it from me. And maybe if there are some questions, then. Well, learn something every day, huh? That's my motto. Okay, so I work with language and communication and this effectful and effectful tech. This is a really interesting uh, development. If you had any question, by the way, our online audience, uh, we are in Warsaw, Poland. And in fact, we are at the forefront of developing technology. I've said it before, the most uh, gifted and and resilient and rich IT community exists right here in Poland and maybe in Warsaw. Uh, amazing stuff. You have a question, sir? Hi. Uh, thank you for the great presentation. Uh, I wonder what's your personal experience with Effect and how did you use that in your own projects and what was the result uh, or the impact on the reliability of, of your code? Yeah, very good question. And my answer is that I have not a lot of experience, not in any project. So this is like I I decided to share with you about this uh, early before I even like got deep into it instead of like two years from now. Uh, and I am currently using FPTS for some of the projects. Uh, and this is uh, I think that some of the typings that are different from uh, from FPTS in FPTS can be like can help be more type safe in your code. 
And also there is a lot of different things that are not present in FPTS. So uh, for example, there are like fibers, uh, like, like all, it, it's basically pretty much like a different kind of asynchronous uh, computations that you can uh, like start, for example, create those effects that are like, for example, like asynchronous functions that you can, for example, stop in the middle. You, you, you don't have with async functions, you cannot do it. They go like uh, you can ignore the, the promise, but you cannot cancel it in when it's going on. With effect, you can do it. You can uh, have like automatic like retries, automatic like a lot of even like uh, uh, like uh, exponential back off uh, and retry uh, can be done like in one line of code. So if you structure your code uh, in effect, I think that this will scale really well because what I'm currently using with FPTS is mostly for like error handling and uh, and like those uh, those either uh, either types or uh, or like instead of using nulls and undefines. But I think that with effect, we can model entirely different like asynchronous computation model and like the different control flow. So this is something that I really encourage everyone to use. But th this is what I'm just starting to do. And uh, I'm, I decided to share just at the beginning of my like interest in it. I hope that it answers your, your question. And please don't forget to grab your Rubik's Cube. <laughs> okay. Hi. Uh, Hi. Thank you for the talk. And the question I have, you mentioned TypeScript Plus. Uh, I wonder how the effect team is kind of approaching keeping up with the TypeScript releases and do they plan eventually to push to merge those extensions to the uh, TypeScript mainstream? I think that currently they um, are merging the, the new versions and they are like keeping the fork uh, that is up to date. But I'm really, this is all what I was also worrying about how they can uh, like uh, in the long run, keep up with the development of, uh, like, would they keep the fork forever? Uh, I hope that it would be like a proof of concept for the TypeScript team to maybe see some features that they implemented and maybe uh, merge it upstream. Uh, so that would be like a long-term solution, I think, to have like a single language. Uh, also, there is like a question of how do you use different compilers if there if it's like a forked, uh, because this is basically like a forked uh, TSC compiler from like the TypeScript official, um, uh, you know, co compiler. Uh, but we have like uh, SWC that we might use, which is not compatible with the dialect. So, I, what I personally hope is that. Uh, it will be like a um, testing ground for new uh, features of the language that would support this uh, this uh, functional programming style. Uh, and maybe this will be merged into a TypeScript, but currently uh, like the, the only, uh, TS plus is only used inside of the project of effect. You just, are, you are not expected to use it yourself. You are expected to use normal TypeScript. This is like something to simplify the internal development of the project. So it is itself compiled with the TypeScript plus compiler, but like no one is really, it is not really even uh, that easy to find that they are using different compiler. They, they are not like, uh, talking about it everywhere, uh, so uh, it is not like visibly in the documentation. So, but this is a, a sign for me that they are very serious about about this framework. If they are even creating a new version of the language and, and the compiler. Wow, uh, I must say it's not very easy to, to create a feeling of anticipation in this room. I think you have done that. <laughs> I think that people are very curious about what will happen and how this will develop. Is that right? Yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Pov, any other questions for Rafał? Any other questions for Mr. Povtar Mr. Pochtarski? There has to be one question because there's one Rubik's Cube left. We have so. one Rubik's Cube. Ah, he heard Rubik's Cube and the hand shot up. Okay, one moment, sir. I'll be right with you. <clears throat> yeah, so hi. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, on the at the beginning, you mentioned that uh, uh, effect TS has uh, sometimes for none value, so no value. And I wonder if it can be used somehow, or do you have any experience with uh, uh, like uh, schemas uh, generated from Swagger, like with open API tools, which are nullable? Or for example, when we have front end validations with UP and Zot, when we have nullable. Uh, uh, nullable uh, values. Uh, do you think that it can be like uh, used for handling those uh, 
those processes because sometimes there is really a mess with, with uh, uh, optional uh, properties and uh, when something can be undefined and so on. So do you have an experience with that? Uh, the non uh, type in in effect it's as you notice it's typed so it's not like just non but it's non of something uh, so this have some consequences in at least with like interoperability with FPTS so you cannot like pass it both ways one way it will work but the other way it the type system will say that uh, like this is like the uh, non value of not the thing that you are expecting which is like a little bit crazy when you think about it like you, you gave me nothing but nothing of not what I was expecting expecting I was expecting nothing of something else so but this uh, this have some like consequences in like later uh, when you reason about like the program because usually you expect something uh, and is is rarely uh, you rarely like expect nothing of anything because it, it, usually it's either something or something specific either nothing or something specific that has some methods or some properties and uh, and this is i think this is easier for the, for the library to keep track of the types internally uh, but one of the like uh, disadvantages of this is that lack of interoperability both ways with fpts uh, but uh, i don't think that this will be something much different for us because like the methods uh, that you use on uh, like the uh, like i mean the method of working with with the non type uh, you, you basically never really type anything as non because you rarely want to get nothing but you really use like uh, either uh, I mean, here in uh, the option type, so uh, so uh, so so either uh, like nothing or something. But here is like like the some nothing of some kind, uh, which is like later uh, processed. This this is actually when in my experience of like experimentation that I did, I have more experience with FPTS, as I said. Uh, I don't think there will be much difference in working with it. But I think that maybe it is easier internally for the framework to uh, to track the the types, especially when you have those generator functions that are like crazy complicated internally. How they uh, because they yield like the wrapped objects that are uh, those uh, those effects that are that that are there. And I think that it uh, was a decision that made easier the implementation. Not exactly the usage would be much different. But this is a very good question. I, I myself want to like dig more, more deeply into it. Maybe there are some discussions on GitHub. I always like to dig some old discussions on GitHub issues and see the rationale behind it. But this is a very good question. Uh, certainly worth a Rubik's Cube. Mr. Pocztarski, you have a very incredible sense of humor. You know that, right? Oh, really? I didn't know. <laughs> You are yeah. really funny. I mean, the come first on. person to uh, Yes or no? You feel it. You feel it. <laughs>